Hey everyone, it's RV's Gone Wild number 30. Can you believe it? Number 30. Thanks for everyone who's been along the ride. That's a crazy number. I never thought we'd get there when I just did that first one. But keep on clicking. Hopefully this one's a real good one. Coming up soon too, we've got a turducken compilation and some travel videos coming out. So check those out as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope this video earns your subscription. Let's get started. And Rachel W. sent this to us. It's in Brookings, Oregon, where a tree fell. Apparently the person was inside and they survived only by inches. Thankfully they survived. I swear this is like the year of falling trees for RVs. And I don't have all the information behind this one, but this travel trailer is toast. At least that's the name of the video. Looks like it flipped over and it didn't fare so well. Most travel trailers don't do well once they flip over. Check it out. And Chris B here, he writes that he bent a bullet. He and his wife were in the Cape Cod, or the northernmost tip of Provincetown, and I guess that has some narrow streets and some vegetation, and he caught a tree branch. He caught it overhanging on the city street, and it, it really did a number on his yawning, yanking it six feet back and bending all the hardware. Don't feel bad, Chris. You know, I did the same exact thing with my bullet. Check it out. It wasn't quite as far, but I did the same thing. Turns out it was it was extended out just like one inch, and, and, and then as I was going by this tree, leaving my sister's property, Bam, it ripped it off, and it was on Christmas Eve, no less. Luckily, insurance covered everything. And luckily, Chris had another RVer that helped him out, helped him remove the awning, and this guy apparently had a really cool 1975 GMC, so he wanted to share the pics with us, and Chris wants to thank Randall and Tony for their help. It's always nice when you see an RV down out there, get out there and help them out. Craig B sent us a couple of links. I'm going to show you the videos here, and there are links in the description to these videos. The first one is the 13 worst American RVs and motorhomes in American history. That's what they call it. I'll be honest, when I was looking at this, I was thinking some of these are classics. Some of these are the more famous style of RVs in the uh, whole RV community. So uh, I don't know if I agree with all their choices, but you can check out these 13 worst American RVs and motorhomes in American history. The American dream of hitting the open road in a motorhome has been around for decades, but not all RVs, recreational vehicles, were created equal. Some motorhomes were poorly designed, unreliable, or simply a bad idea from the start. Here are 13 of the worst American motorhomes in history, highlighting how misguided engineering, cost cutting, and poor decisions created some real disasters on wheels. Another one he sent us a link to is this guy who I've actually posted his Volkswagen uh, cab over before. In this one, he's refurbishing an Airstream that's melded onto a car. Better that you just check it out rather than I explain it. All right, well, we're not really sure how long this project's gonna take, but today we're gonna start renovating the 1960 Airstream Air Auto. If you watched the last video, you know what this thing right now is kind of... Brad and Judy are back. This one camped next to them in Grass Valley, California, where they were at the International Harvester Sierra Fall Rally. And they had a newer Mercedes convertible on the top and a 1935 Packard in the bottom. That's quite the load to be towed around behind your RV. And guess who's back this week? Friend of the channel, Chris Spencer from the KOA in Las Vegas at Samstown. Stayed there many times and I'll be staying there again next time I'm in Vegas. Chris spots a lot of cool stuff coming through Vegas, and he sent us a few this time. He writes, we've got another off-road worthy and nice Super C with a smart car. This other off-road rig's not quite as large as the rest, but it still qualifies. He found this Tesla truck, which is not really an RV, but you can sleep in it. Apparently, you can stay at the Samstown there. He saw this extra large sleeper semi checking in today. And this is his personal turducken from back in the day. It's a three-quarter, four-ton diesel, 35-foot fifth wheel with a 14-foot enclosed trailer. Hey, Chris, thanks for sending these all in, as always. 
Dave S. sends us a picture of these FLD-120 campers. He says the black one is his and he's owned it for years. The red ones are FLD-120s and the yellow one is an FLD-1112 like his. Apparently you can tell by the length of the fenders. Yeah, this is where truck and RV definitely cross over. If you have any crazy pictures or videos of RVs, make sure to send them my way. Thanks to Earl Jean B, who spotted this back in 2022 at the KOA in Las Vegas at Samstown. I'm wondering, Chris, maybe this is before your time. Because I got to believe you would have sent me a picture of this one if you saw it. But first glance, I didn't even think it was an RV. But yep, this is some sort of gooseneck or fifth wheel RV. Only got this one picture. That'd be a sight to see rolling down the road. And that's right, it's time for turducken. You know what turducken is. Turducken is when you take a turkey and inside you cook a duck and inside the duck you cook a chicken and it tastes great, but it can be a weird way to tow. Let's take a look at some examples. And a lot of you folks wonder, hey, is it even like legal or how the heck do I even double tow like this? Check out this video on double towing. Tips and tricks for double towing. If you're thinking about doing some double towing, um, I'm going to talk about the things that I've learned and just some, some tips on how to make it work. And then secondly, I'm going to go into some more uh, pros and cons about double towing versus, say, a toy hauler. They're kind of designed for motorcycles and UTVs. Well, what if you want to bring a boat? William B. actually built this rack for his cousin to haul his bass boat over the cab of his 450. Apparently, it all clears the GVWR on the uh, vehicle. Apparently, he does this at Rehorn RV if you're in Sacto, California. He says he loves watching our channel at lunch. Thanks for watching and thanks for sending this in. If you're in Sacto, check out Rayhorn RV. And here's a video of a thing called the Hitchhog, which is double towing a rock crawler. I tried looking to see if these were for sale. I don't think they're for sale anymore. And I'll be honest, when I look at this thing, I think, wow, it's a real interesting kind of dynamic because normally if you put that trailer on the back of the other trailer, it's going to put downward pressure on the back of the trailer, upward pressure where it connects to the truck, and that can lead to trailer sway. And with this one, basically the rear trailer is putting a downward force on that, that hitch helper, but the it's, it's a fulcrum, right? So that means if it's pushing down on one side, it's pushing up on the other side. If it's pushing up on the other side, that means it's pushing up on the back of the trailer, which means it's pushing down where it connects to the truck which makes for a more stable ride that being said can't find it online for sale I have a feeling this thing just didn't last in the market if I'm wrong send me a link to where you buy this thing I'd love to check it out and here's another video where somebody did on their weird bumper pull And there's a link to all these videos in the description. I thought this one was pretty cool. It was sort of like the perfect capture of the sun and the sunset and the shadow and the turducken. Check out this turducken shadow. As someone who films a lot of YouTube videos, that is what we call the money shot. Hey, don't forget to click like on this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. That's the number one way you can help me out. And if you ever wondered what it's like to pull a turducken, pull one of these double trailers. Here's a nice close-up view of a turducken pulling out of the driveway. How long do you think that turducken is? Put your guess below in the comments. I want to see what you think. Brad and Judy sent this in. They were going over Donner Pass on their way to the International Harvester Sierra Fall Rally. And the white Dodge tow rig is on the flatbed. The red tow truck is towing their turducken travel trailer on the side by side behind it. Apparently this thing was a long mess. So not the best picture, so I had a hard time making heads or tails. But thanks for sending it in, Brad and Judy. Mike M sent this to us. He says his wife and him love the show. They watch it every week, especially the turducken portion of the show. They saw this turducken in Ottawa, Ontario, although it's not really RV turducken. It's what he calls bike ducking. By the way, those wheels and the bearings on those trailers will not keep up to freeway speeds. So I hope that motorcycle is just tooling around town. 
And here's a nice turducken that's got two side-by-sides on the back. If you count up the amount of wheels and axles that are rolling down the road with this thing, this is some serious heavy-duty turducken. And sometimes you don't find turduckens on the road. Sometimes you find them on the farm. And here's some farm trailer and turducken going on right here. Imagine this. You're driving down the road and you see a double tow turducken ahead. And then you think, no, is that two of them? Wait, three? No, four? That's right. Apparently this is Utah where we're going to find a whole lot of off-road turducken. Now, ladies and gentlemen, check this turducken out. I want you to count up how many things are towing what. You got the truck. Towing the fifth wheel, towing the trailer. No, it's not towing the car. The car and the trailer are actually following behind. So it's not all connected, but it's still turducken in the front. We got this rest area turducken or something, it looks like. You got that sea dew in the back. Funny thing about this turducken is you really want to have sort of a trailer camera set up behind your trailer because you're not going to see if this thing gets a flat or if you even lose this trailer. It's so small, you're not going to see it in your mirrors. And here we got the Blue Boy Turducken. That's right, this Turducken looks like it's designed for tending to RV parked sewage tasks. You got one in the back, one in the middle. That's one way to do your sewer dump. Steve from Portage, Wisconsin, and that is pronounced Portage, not Portage. He bought this Imagine in 2021, but he didn't like the way it pulled with his 2018 F-150. So when it was four months old, he decided to cut the frame hitch off and build a gooseneck hitch. Now it pulls great. I bet that's a way better distribution of weight across your truck for sure. Good job there. Nice truck. Randolph G saw this in Spanish Fort, Alabama in July 2023. What a cool look, this whole fire engine but not kind of look. Pete M sent this in to us. I saw it uh, floating around the internet this week on different Facebook pages. I actually copied a picture myself, but then he sent this in, so he gets credit. Thanks a lot, Pete, for sending this in. And that's why I've decided to give this Ford my tip of the hat, Gold Star. No, I'm just kidding. I can't give this the Gold Star Award. I'm just messing with you. I wouldn't be caught dead driving around something like this, but it certainly looks funny. Let's go on to the next one. Mike H spotted this classic, which used to be an RV. And Andrew B. from Coquitlam, B.C., which is very close to me, and hopefully you survived the crazy rain and floods we just had over there. But he spotted this in Maple Ridge, which is disturbingly close to where I live, and he spotted it on Canadian Thanksgiving. I don't know if you know this, but Canadians don't have the same Thanksgiving Day as Americans. We have it in October up here. Americans have Thanksgiving in November. Andy notes this is a 1976 El Camino towing a 1988 Bigfoot fifth wheel. He looked up the specs. He says this El Camino can carry 1,100 pounds and tow 6,000. The Bigfoot only weighs around 3,500. So he says, surprisingly legal. Michael L. writes he loves the channel. He attached a photo of their 1968 Kenskill, which was down at I.B. McGee Campground in Port Aranassas, Texas some years ago. You wanted to see it on the channel? Here it is. Eric C. spotted this truck and camper near Monument Valley, one of my favorite places to camp. I'm sure this guy had a lot of fun over at Valley of the Gods where you can go off-road. Utah's the perfect place for a truck like this. Gary. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana. He writes he loves our channel, and he spotted this four-wheel drive Ford van in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. He figured it was right up our alley, and indeed it is. I will say, I've often wondered if matching my tires and my rims between my trailer and my truck would look cool. But after seeing it here, I realize it doesn't. I won't be doing that. But the rig itself looks awesome, for sure. Tim M found this strapped on the bumper of a travel trailer they were working on in the shop. And he wanted to share his motorhome, which has got a bit of flower power in it, it seems. I spotted this near my town at a brewery parked outside. Not quite sure what kind of RV or if this is even more of a, like an old, you know, star trailer or a work trailer. I don't really know what this is. If anybody recognizes it or knows what it is, let me know. Thanks to Rod B. He says he's looking forward to every week for another great episode. And this is a pic of his 1975 Ford F-350 camper special with a 1977 King O, the road truck camper taken at Convict Lake, California. He bought the camper off Craigslist for 500 bucks in 2018 and it's become his retirement hobby. Thanks a lot, Rod. John L., he saw this at the I-5 at Herbert South Miles Safety Rest Area in California. Apparently this guy built it himself 
He made it look like this, and he travels between California and Oregon selling his beef jerky that he makes in the trailer. Apparently, he has his own stove in there. John says the beef jerky is great. Yeah, I'm going to buy meat from a guy in a trailer driving down the road. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, John. I'm sure it tasted good. It's kind of hard to make smoked meat unsafe. If it smells all right, you can eat it. But it's definitely a cool-looking rig. And John B. saw this on the freeway in Spokane Valley. At first glance, I would think maybe this thing should not be towing, but, but I know a lot of these SUVs that are coming out recently, especially the European ones and Japanese ones, these things actually have pretty significant towing power for their size. I'd want to see the specs, though. John L. wanted to show off his beautiful 1978 Wander Lodge with a rear deck. Ken H. sent me this link. To be honest, I'm not fully sure why they made these, but these are just obviously somebody's, uh, you know, Photoshop fantasy. At first, I thought maybe these are AI generated, but no, I think these are just Photoshopped. They're, they're too consistent to be AI. But the whole idea here is what happens when you take a sports car and you meld it with a luxury, some kind of multi-level RV. I mean, clearly impossible, but cool to think about. Which one's your favorite? Comment below. Lisa C. wanted to send us this 1949 truck camper, which came from an old farm. Apparently, it was in really bad shape when they got it, but her husband completely restored it, and now it's a really cool old camper. Tell your husband good job. Raina and Charles write, these are their two RV rigs. The red F-350 Big Red is 2002. They purchased new and it has a 7.3 power stroke diesel, six speed manual transmission and is a four by four. The sliding camper is a 2015 Travel Light Illusion 1100, which is 11 feet long. They got an Onan generator, EcoFlow power station, and all kinds of stuff in between. They also eventually found this one, Bertha, which is a 2002 7.3 diesel. Bertha has a power adjustable pedal so the wife can drive it. They added a Holiday Rambler Alumalite Custom with a 12 foot slide out to the stable. They want to travel out west and up north when they retire. Coming up to Canada, when, at least in summertime, you'll love it up here. Philip B, he sent this to us. Philip B writes, this rig looked unique enough to send our way. He loves the channel and he hopes he cross paths with my wife and I someday. He said a couple of nice things that I'm a little too humble to put here, but Thanks very much for the kind words, Phil. I really enjoyed you enjoy the channel, and I do hope we cross paths one day. His first RV was his 1955 Ford F100 with a shell mounted on the back. It had an inline six-cylinder engine with a three-speed column mounted stick shift. We call that three on the tree, and I used to have a Ford like that too. The shell was made for a wide bed, but it was modified to fit on this narrow bed of his truck. His best friend and him drove it from the San Francisco Bay Area to the desert outside of Reno. A plink with a Remington single shot bolt action 22 rifle. No animals were harmed in the shooting of that rifle. And most importantly, I'm going to give this classic Ford F100 the tip of the hat gold star RVing with Joe Ford Award, the coolest Ford of this episode. Thanks for sending it in, Philip. But Philip also writes that his first real RV was a 1975 Ford 250 with the 8 foot 6 pack cab over camper. The truck had a 350 cubic inch gas engine with a three-speed automatic transition. He bought this rig to share the road and the outdoors with his wife and son as a diversion as she fought her second bout with cancer. Good news is she survived. We ended up selling this rig after we bought the home in Sierra Nevada photos. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad she's doing better. Cancer sucks. Ray sends us in. I believe that's how you pronounce the name. Found this really cool crawler hauler on carsandbids.com. Thought, why not share it with Joe, my favorite YouTuber? Oh, that's very nice of you. I'll put a link in the description to this, but here, check out some of the pics. Chickens qualifies to duck and he's owned three of these. This is a 1976 born free 20 foot long camper with tag axle. He restored it, painted it the same red as his new, or at least new then, 2002 F 150 extra cab. He towed an enclosed trailer with their Harleys in it from Portland to Sturgis in 2002. Lots of folks, lots of folks along the way thought it was new. 
He even had some people who wanted to buy it. Hey, thanks for sharing with us. Randy S. from Portland, Oregon. And NATO is back. He's a real friend of the channel, and he has sent us countless images and pictures. And here's a few more from NATO to round out this video. Check it out. We've got a lot more videos coming out. I've got some travel videos you can see right here to my left. I just redid the YouTube channel. So now you can see that there's a playlist for all the camping videos right there. Below me right here is the RV's Gone Wild playlist. And down there in the corner is the homeless and RVing video that's gotten really popular and it's gotten like over 100,000 views in just a couple of weeks. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Thanks everyone.